tēnā rā tauta katoa e tūana hau ki te mihi atu a ki a koutou, a te hau kāinga, te atiawa, kei te mihi, kei te mihi, e rauranga tira mā, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, a tēnā rā tātou katoa. So thank you, Shay, uh, for the introduction. Uh, it's absolutely our honour and privilege uh, to be here today to share a little bit um, about our story. As Shay has mentioned, oh, actually, I'm going to mention this right now. I come from the best two places in Aotearoa, New Zealand, <laughs> where I'm from Ngaitarangi, Ngāti Rangi Nui descent, uh, from Tauranga Moana, and also I'm from the metropolis of Motueka, uh, where I come from Ngāti Rārua. Uh, just in terms, Shay mentioned, yes, I'm a proud uh, mother of four, and I think you know your children certainly give you that compass. They certainly uh, ground you in terms of what um, is reality. And I also uh, have the privilege of being involved in a number of education and social um, enterprises. Kia ora tato. Of course, Steve Saunders, aho. Um, so I'm also from uh, the best place in New Zealand, which is Tauranga Moana, and I'm Ngāti Ranganui descent as well. Um, so we're, we're uh, from the same, we share the same hapu back in um, Tauranga, so it's very cool to be here with Mediana. Um, this is particularly special for me because I wasn't brought up culturally, but uh, what we're going to talk about today, starting back in 2014, took me on my journey reconnecting with my people and actually giving me as an entrepreneur, um, as we heard this morning, you can make a lot of money, you can do things, you can be an entrepreneur, and then you wake up and say, so what? I wake up now and I've got this great purpose about how I can take those learnings and those lessons and help transform our people into the modern era. Um, you know, we've been on a journey of recovering our, our lands and our rights, etc. Um, and through that process, we haven't really built the capability that we need now more than ever. So this is what our um, co-pop is about. Kia ora. So yes, so I'm a, a owner and director of, of Waka Tu, um, and our purpose is to preserve and enhance our taonga, our legacy, for the benefit of current and future generations. And last year, uh, we celebrated our 40th year. Now, that doesn't mean to say we've only been going for 40 years, because uh, our families, uh, our extended kin, they came through from Kafia down to, uh, which is in the uh, further north, they came through uh, Te Atiawa, and they pushed on through to Te Tauihu, to the top of the South Island, Golden Bay, Motueka, Nelson and Marlborough, through a series of epic migrations um, from 1828 to 1834. And I often think about um, my journey in the incorporation. Uh, it wasn't by accident. I was a scholarship recipient. I came through our associate director program. And then when I think about my relations and the senior leadership roles that we hold within Waka Tu, you know, it was, um, I guess, succession, it was mentoring, and it was leadership by design. And um, my cousins often remind me that if service is beneath you, then leadership uh, is beyond you. So it's a very, um, you know, a, a kind reminder. And we are a family of kaitiaki, of custodians, in the top of the south. It is our home, it is our tūranga waiwai, it is a place where we feel connected to our whenua, to our land, to our water, where we feel empower, empowered. And it's that real deep, I guess, love that we have and strength and respect for our place, our people, our planet, and of course, uh, our purpose. And that is delivered, we live and breathe that, and it's through the, uh, our educational programs. And it's through Cornwall New Zealand, which is our food and uh, beverage basket to the world. We export currently uh, to 45 countries, beautiful products, uh, which is love for the land and respect for the sea. And I, um, when I joined uh, our board uh, nine years ago, uh, one of our whānau got their call up to head over to uh, Stanford University to be part of a Māori food and beverage cluster. And he couldn't go, so I was the next cab off the ranks. So I said, yes, yes, I'm, I'm off there. And when I came back, they said, you know, what did you learn up there? And, and really, for me, I guess it was the start of the journey um, around where was the next phase in terms of our journey, in terms uh, of our development. And um, I guess the great thing about that was I came back and, and you know, innovation, I guess, it's one of those buzzwords. Um, but for us, really, at Waka Tu, it, it's about um, doing things better and doing better things. So I came back, and there was two things. My cousin always, another cousin says to me, if you're not waking up shit scared, if you're not waking up excited, then you're not living. So I guess I came back and I, and I said, well, actually, you know, there's two things that are actually keeping me up at night. We say that we are kaitiaki, 
do we actually really live and breathe that? What does that actually mean to us? So we currently, one of the programs that I look after is our, around our land and water uh, wellness. We're developing up our framework in terms of what that means to us. I've had a lot of discussion um, around metrics and how do we measure that. But, you know, we talk about the modi, we talk about the life force of, of the whenua of our water. My other cousins would say when they go on the whenua, it actually, it talks to them. Um, and, and, they he and they hear the land talking to them. And I'm not too sure exactly um, how we measure that. But I guess, you know, we tell our stories and, and we work together uh, as a group. The second uh, program that I look, at, uh, look after is our High Value Ad program. It's around an investment in uh, food and nutrition solutions. And it's really predicated along a lot of the health issues that our families suffer from. So around uh, metabolic health, obesity, heart disease, as well as a lot of um, skin and uh, joint disorders. So we've got a full-on program um, in terms of looking um, at the marine. We've just mapped out all our uh, fungi, uh, flora and fauna, marine species, insects across Te Tauihu. We've put that into a centralised uh, database. And then we've had a look, uh, we've had wānanga around our traditional uh, practices as well as uh, rongoa. So when I look at both of those projects, it comes into a third um, realm, I guess, a little bit about what Brian was um, saying this morning is that how do you build a resilient community? How do we reconnect our families back to whenua, uh, back to their culture? So, um, of course, our marae is our, is our centre point, it's our hub. So we're doing a major redesign of what that looks like uh, in terms of housing, energy, um, gardens. And actually, it's actually going back to the model where how we used to live how we used to think that, um, you know, currently we think we know it all, but it's actually about learning it all, and it's about sharing it all. So I guess coming to um, a place like this, uh, this weekend and the last couple of days, has really, I think, reinforced a lot of our thinking, a lot of our practices, and actually where we're heading to in the future. So we don't want to do everything ourselves. Um, we like collaboration, we like allies, we're heavily investing in partnerships, and one of those, I guess, uh, movements that we're involved with is Nuku Ki Te Puku. Uh, doesn't they, don't they look like a great bunch um, <laughs> of people? But basically, Nuku Ki Te Puku, it was formed uh, in 2014. It came about um, with the support of Callahan Innovation. Um, and mainly, you know, I often think, you know, they're entities, but it really comes back to the people. So Hemi Rolleston, uh, General Manager of the Māori Economy, brought together Māori entrepreneurs, iwi and trust groups, to actually start to think about how can we mobilise and how might they work better uh, with Māori food and beverage entities. And I guess for us, um, we've been on a series of trips um, offshore because it's quite hard when you're actually in your communities, you're doing things every day, but actually how do you sort of get that lift and shift? How do you actually start to um, think about other things that might be coming down the pipeline? So we've travelled overseas, we've looked at new food new, uh, technologies, we've seen startups, we actually visited each other to see what um, each other are up to in Aotearoa, New Zealand, and then we decided, well, actually, maybe it's time to start to formalise ourselves as a particular entity, and let's build the programme, because a lot of us actually face the same challenges, so how might we solve those together? For example, a lot of um, our members, they were, you know, uh, I think Charles mentioned yesterday that governance can often be one of those blockers, so how do you start to take them on a journey in terms of where we need to go? How, 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 do, we, how do we talk to each other? What's the education lift and shift that's required? And other things where how do you actually get you know, investors? It's too hard to try and do everything ourselves. So how do we do things better? So we came up with our, um, with our purpose. And the purpose of Nuku Ki Te Puku is how we design a healthier future together. And it's really um, al along the lines of having some similar, I guess, values you know, manaki tanga, how do we care for one another? Oaha tanga, how, how are we innovative together um, around pono and actually being truthful to who we are and who we stand for and being transparent about how we share this journey with others. And rangatira tanga, you know, we are here to serve and we should be excellent uh, in everything that we do. So Steve's now just going to take us through actually um, some of the projects that we're involved in. Good. So um, I've got the... Um 
great job of trying to explain how the Nukus work. But, but essentially, we've really developed this really great collaborative ecosystem. So this is about our members, and this is about our partners. And this is about, you can see uh, on the left there, that, that the brands that are coming out of this group of, of Māori collectives and entrepreneurs, and how we can use that knowledge and fast-track um, ideation, prototyping, and faster, um, faster outputs to market. And, and that's partnering with our government partners, utilising those research institutes, that science, um, that capability, but also the acceleration enabling partners, the NZTEs, those things that help us be able to actually um, accelerate fast into the marketplace. And taking all that knowledge in from our experience of, of our innovation outputs, our, um, our commercial enterprises, and being able to fast track through that sort of ideation funnel to get those outputs a lot quicker. And really lifting and shifting that education process for Māori. And it's a really cool, uh, one of the coolest things I've been involved in. I mean, we saw someone like Ngāti Paro who, um, who have fisheries, uh, wanting to, to change into, into um, high quality products like smoked fish, for example, to then have one of, um, one of our entrepreneurs, Jason Witehero, who owns the number one New World in New Zealand, who was able to ideate that smoked fish process, get it into consumer tasting and help perfect that product very quickly for Ngāti Pro to now that they're building a state-of-the-art new factory for, for that high-value um, processing of fish rather than the low-value that we're so commonly used to. Um, people like me um, with Robotics Plus, for example, really putting Māori at the front end of Agritech. Um, so we're creating autonomous um, vehicles, platforms, robotic um, solutions to help harvest our produce because of the ageing populations, the lack of labour resource, those sorts of things. So how do we make um, food more sustainable and affordable to, to, to people around the world? And to in fact then have someone like Yamaha Motors come to New Zealand and invest in New Zealand in Robotics Plus to really develop our own talent um, pipelines in New Zealand. You know, I think New Zealand has to shift a lot to a talent economy as well. And a lot of our talent goes offshore, comes back at a later date. I really love to see our talent stay onshore um, and, and provide the opportunities for them to actually prosper here in Aotearoa. We better mention um, Kazi Bro, Wayne uh, Mulligan, who was, he, he's been here. Um, he's like this travelling salesman, right? <laughs> he pulls out all these potions and things like that from lung health um, to you name it. You've got a problem, he's got something in his bag. But the big thing for me is um, coming into, um, you know, coming in, um, and acknowledging back with my people and in the culture has really been the support of this group to actually give me that courage to actually do that and stand out there. Very, very powerful. And particularly when we're launching some of the initiatives we'll show you in a minute, to have that support behind you is incredibly powerful because um, being an entrepreneur, as you know, can sometimes often be a very, very lonely journey. But now I have this family, I have this purpose, it's like, it's like awesome. And um, it's a bit like the Hotel California, because once you check in, it's hard to check out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what, we're, what we're always doing is, um, yes, that's true, I get dragged to everything. But, <laughs> but um, you know, once, once, um, what we do regularly though as a group is we, we, we check into what's going on, ensuring are we covering everything, where are gaps? And um, so recently uh, we, did a, we did a sort of a check through with all the, all the part members and sort of said, well, you know, where do you still find you're struggling? Where are there gaps? And through that process, we, we've, come, we've decided to actually form, Nuku Kitapuku was sort of like a membership. We're now actually forming it as a company. Um, and that company is really to take, take um, our members through another level of um, fantastic sort of learning and education. So really um, what we're wanting to do is the education piece around Māori and investment into science and R&D and IP and that commercialisation of that process. And so we, we, we have the uh, Tuora uh, High Value um, Nutrition Project. So we looked around to say what project could we actually do together that was meaningful. And because uh, you know we're from the land, we're plant-based people, um, what we wanted to do was address an issue that was dear to our own people and also what we saw as a, a growing trend in the world, and that was diabetes. And so this project is um, the first true um, high-value nutrition through the New Zealand Science um, Challenge. That is a, a, this is the first true Māori-led project through that high-value nutrition. And that's around creating a, a plant-based bar or snack for, for, um, for treatment or snacking for pre-diabetes. 
And our target is that it's not only going to solve something that's dear to our own people, diabetes, but also the, the growing diabetes issues in Asia. And the group of us are actually heading up to uh, Singapore very shortly to, um, to, uh, um, to address the conference in Singapore and in Asia around the product that we're producing. So this is a really cool thing where we're in, we're in the science. We're doing education alongside the project. So we're bringing the members along. How do we formulate the bar? How do we go through clinical trials? How do we evaluate that output? How do we um, design the packaging, the market? Um, and head to market. Um, so um, it's a really, really cool um, project. But that's how we start to lift and shift, and that's how we work collectively together to actually start to create opportunities of scale. And to that point, um, this, this one's pretty dear to my heart. Um, I've been 34 years in, in growing. I've, uh, my uh, ancestry is Māori, um, um, Dalmatian, Bohemian, Scottish. All my ancestry is uh, from the whenua, you know. And uh, so growing's been in my family bloodlines for a long time. And um, so really the challenge came from the Federation of Māori Authority to me to say, what, is a, what does a horticultural strategy look like for Māori? How do we develop our regions? How do we develop that underutilised land that's currently just been leased to corn farmers for minimal money per hectare, just destroying that ecosystem, no value, not creating jobs for our people? And so I thought about that and it was really about creating Māori transformation step change by working collectively and developing an end-to-end -end value chain. So that's everything we've talked about in the last few days about scale and collectiveness. New Zealand's a small place. If we can't collectivise to actually make impact, we're going to struggle for a long time. Doing it individually uh, is a hard road. We're only 4.7 million people mm -hmm. and we have the ability to con connect, um, be collective and actually make a difference. This project's really been a great journey um, for me. Personally, I spent um, hours on the road having cups of tea at Little Marais and, and, and land trusts all around the country to really understand what is, what is important to, to our people. And it was really about the land. It was about keeping the whānau together, creating the jobs. They wanted people to be able to stay, stay on the lands, not have to go from the lands somewhere else to find that income. Um, so what we did was we actually um, talked to Plant and Food Research, the, our, our government research institute around horticulture, and found that really in the berry programs, no one was really um, funding that. So we really looked at this whole process of saying, if we can uh, fund the berry program, take the ownership of the genetics program, and, um, and we can actually create real value chain through that process. So we, we signed an agreement with Plant and Food Research and all the berry genetics out of the New Zealand breeding system are in a co-owned uh, co venture now between Māori and the government. And, um, and that's our intergenerational piece where we're leaving a legacy of genetics and breeding into the future. Um, and I'll talk more about that. Then we had to go through, we had 42 Māori entities put 10k each into a seed fund to look at the opportunity. The first big Māori collective ever come together to look at a collective opportunity. And through that work we did all the market research, etc., to put an investment together. Then we went on to our journey of raising capital. Um, we had um, 27, which is equivalent of 33 Māori entities invested into this value chain. So it's incorporated, we're underway, we're planting our first plants, and you can see that we're heading, we're going to create a zespri of berries um, in, a, in a supply chain for Māori. And, and it's a unique proposition, by Māori, for Māori, market-led, ownership of an integrated value chain through well-designed business models, scale, protected high cropping systems, proprietary varieties, regional development, breeding for health, uh, Māori brand stories for provenance. This is an opportunity to have a true Māori brand and tell our stories to the world with something that br uh, brings health and well-being to people, um, being berries. And we're not just going to go and replicate what everyone else is doing trying to grow these big super berries, we're actually going to breed for health. So we're thinking with the program not to try and compete with the $72 million breeding program with the Driscolls or someone offshore, but actually look at how can we en enhance the health aspects of the berries and actually sell berries with our Māori culture, our provenance, and actually a healthy outcome for people globally. Um, and then it's also about creating that whole value chain from the genetics to the growing to the harvesting to the high value processing to the marketing to the exporting to new packaging formats, non-plastic, um, things like that. If you look at berries, you've always seen them in a plastic punnet forever and a day. It's time to change. And the research and development, we want to lead where we can take 
um, some of those health attributes and convert those into high value powders or nutrition or nutraceutical opportunities as well, not just frozen berries. And then we go through the various growing systems, which is really around um, from, from being able to do it stand, uh, regeneratively or through to high tech where we can recycle all the outputs, etc., and be fully sustainable, catch the rainwater, recycle it back through the system through very smart and putting our people at the front end of intensive horticulture with sustainability. And so just before um, Steve wraps up, you know, uh, we fundamentally believe as we've started to um, get these collectives, you know, we've started a movement, you know, it's about, you know, what's good for Māori is good for Aotearoa New Zealand and it's good for humanity. So for us, very simple. We're on a journey and, um, you know, we just want to work with people that are aligned um, with our vision and our values. So I'll just leave you with this uh, whakatauki, um, which is He rangita mata whaiti, he rangita mata whanui, which is a person with a narrow vision has restricted horizon, a person with a, a wide vision has plentiful opportunities. Namahi nui. Kia ora.